Hey, what's up, Yankees fans? Yet again, it is Felix from NYNews.com. Like always, all like almost stars. Hey, Yankees fans, let's talk about Luis Severino. Luis Severino has been struggling. We all saw that one game where they kind of figured him out over there in Tampa. Ever since then, teams have been teeing off on him. I don't think he's fatigued. I don't think he's tipping pitches. I just think he's not comfortable with another catcher behind the plate. Sure, he had a little rift with uh, Gary Sanchez here and there, but it seems to me that Luis Serrino prefers Gary Sanchez behind the plate. So Gary Sanchez, again, is proving how valuable he is to this team. Obviously, the Yankees need him to come back. Sure, I've been throwing out trade proposals with Gary Sanchez. Even uh, John Heyman is reciting it now. But... If he proves to be valuable enough where Luis Severino prefers him as a catcher, I mean, if Gary Sanchez is not hitting, if Gary Sanchez is allowing past balls, but if we can get great starts out of Luis Severino with Gary Sanchez catching him, I mean, Gary Sanchez is valuable right there because we need Luis Severino. Like I said, I don't believe he's fatigued. I don't believe he's tipping pitches. I just think that he is more comfortable with, let's say, a Latino catcher behind the plate. And it's nothing against other catchers. I'm not trying to sound like um, racist or PC or whatever. I'm just saying maybe he's more comfortable with a countryman behind the plate. Obviously, he has had great starts with Gary Sanchez catching him. So we keep hearing about how the Yankees are 30 games over 500. Not to worry. Don't worry. The Yankees are 30 games over 500. But if you look around the league... The league is weak. All these other teams suck, okay? So the Yankees' record really doesn't reflect on how they've been playing. The same could be said about the Red Sox. Maybe the Red Sox have that record as well because, let's be quite realistic here, other teams aren't that great. So if you follow me and the Seminetti source, you will see we have different opinions. He believes that... Um, the Nationals are not going to become sellers, and I believe that the Nationals are going to become sellers. And we keep seeing that the Nationals keep imploding. You can, Nobody out there could tell me that if they become sellers, if they decide to pull the plug, that one of those players that the Nationals decide to sell off, you can't tell me that they won't wind up as a New York Yankee. Sure, they have to pass all these teams, but we're talking about a rebuild from the Nationals. They obviously thought about selling before the deadline, but they are going to have to make that decision within this week or the week coming up. Okay, the, Na the Nationals are not going anywhere. They have two pesky young teams ahead of them. They're like, what, eight games or nine games out of the wild card. It is time for them to sell. It is time for them to pull the plug if they respect their fan base because if they do sell, they'll get really a great return on the talent that they have. Also, I keep seeing Yankees fans suggesting that Andahor should move to first base. Come on. Andahor is a rookie. Andahor is young. Give him time to at least develop. Give him time to at least <laughs> play a full season at third base. Make that decision maybe when he's three or two years into the league. Not now. Greg Bird is obviously a great defensive first baseman. I mean, you have no choice. He's a left-handed bat in your lineup. That just makes absolutely zero sense to plug Andahor at first base. And you're sending Greg Bird a signal and telling him, hey, uh, you suck. So if you don't turn it around, uh, Andahor is going to replace you. But it makes absolutely zero sense. We've all seen in the past, even with the new stadium, that left-handed bats at Yankee Stadium win championships. The 2009 Yankees, they were heavy with left-handed bats. This new wave of right-handed bats in your lineup, I mean, it works at some degree, but you need left-handed bats on the New York Yankees. I mean, history shows that the Yankees are great when their lineup is stacked with left-handed batters. So again, all this talk about the Yankees are 30 games over 500. do not worry. Listen, you have the Athletics chasing the Yankees. You have the Mariners chasing the Yankees. Today, we saw an example of that one-game playoff game versus a team's ace. The Yankees did not win that game. Luis Severino got lit up. So the Yankees, in my opinion, since the league sucks, they need to make a move for a bat 
in a starting picture. Anything else, people are just delusional and they're not seeing how other teams are playing. Obviously, these records are kind of suspect. I'm not saying the Yankees are a bad team. I'm not saying that the Red Sox are a bad team, but they have that record because, like I said, and will repeat continuously, other teams aren't that great. Look, I like Michael K. I think he's the hardest working sports broadcaster in the game, but he keeps reciting. Don't worry, the Yankees are 30 games over 500, but he's not telling you guys that other teams just suck that other teams like the A's and the Mariners are going to beat these teams that the Red Sox and the Yankees are facing as well. So any little losing streak that the Yankees get on, that is ground the Mariners and the Athletics are going to gain on the Yankees. Just imagine if the A's or the Mariners surpassed the Yankees for that first place in the wild court spot. Just imagine, they'll just have to play that game on the road. I mean, that's how close these other teams are. So yes, please, Yankees fans, stop being parrots. Use your brains. It doesn't matter if the Yankees are 30 games over 500. The fact of the matter is, other teams suck, okay? Other teams suck. Other teams suck. Other teams suck. Did that register in your brain? Other teams suck. So, in my opinion, the Yankees need, like I said, the Yankees need to make a few moves before this August 31st deadline. So, Yankees fans, in my opinion, expect Luis Severino to bounce back right when Gary Sanchez comes back. Obviously, he's comfortable with Gary Sanchez catching him, and it's nothing to worry about. He's not fatigued. He's not tipping pitches. So, Yankees fans, leave your opinions in the comment section below. What do you think about Luis Severino? Do you think he's going to continue to pitch bad? Or do you agree with me that he's more comfortable pitching to Gary Sanchez? So like always, leave your opinions in the comment section below. This has been Felix from NYNews.com. Share, like, and subscribe, and I will check you out next time.